This is the plaintiff, Vaughn Sly. He says he hired the defendant to ship his 1990 Toyota pickup truck to Belize. But it arrived damaged. When he complained to the defendant, the guy told him the truck was damaged prior to shipping, which is an out-and-out lie. He's really peeved and is suing the irresponsible company for the $650 he's owed. This is the defendant, Kenya Miss You. He says he's not responsible for any damage to the plaintiff's truck because he dropped it off in Florida as he was hired to do. Then it was in other people's hands on its journey to Belize. All he knows is he didn't break the windshield and he owes nothing. He's accused of cracking up a customer. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff hired the defendant to ship a 1990 Toyota from the United States to Belize, and he says that the defendant damaged it en route. Now, the defendant is saying, no way, that when it arrived in Florida, which was his responsibility, everything was okay, so it's not his problem. It's the case of everyone aggrieved seems to whisper Belize. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Yana. Okay, Mr. Sly, talk to me. What happened? I'm, I'm the original owner of a 1990 Toyota pickup truck that I donated wow. to. That's commitment. Uh, that is friend. commitment. A 30-year-old <laughs> pickup truck. Okay. And, and I donated it to a family in Belize to use on their farm. So on February 12th, I hired the defendant to ship my vehicle from Baltimore to Port Everglades in Florida. So, okay. um, and they, then you they, hired somebody okay. else to take it from Port Everglades to Belize? Correct. Okay, so go on. The day before, I went to the bank machine and got $650 cash in order to give to him when he picked up the vehicle. So before he loaded the vehicle on his rack, uh, he filled out the inspection sheet indicating all the damages that was on the vehicle. Okay, okay. of course, there was and no was damage. Was the windshield to the, damage? No, of course not. <laughs> okay, right. and none and, and noted on not. the inspection sheet. Correct. So, so go um, then he proceed he proceeded to load the vehicle onto his carrier. Now his when job was only to, to drive it from Baltimore to Florida. Correct. And when he got to Florida, what did he do? When he got to Florida, he sent me a photo of the vehicle when he had dropped it off. Okay. So now I looked at the text and the photo, of course it's a small picture on, on the text and I couldn't see from that picture that there was any damage on the vehicle. So that was on the 15th. Okay, um, and he didn't so tell you, hey, something happened to the windshield. There's no discussion whatsoever. Correct. Okay, so go correct. on. So, so the vehicle sat because it was President's Day, so it was supposed to load on the, on the boat on Thursday, but it didn't make it because customs was, was not open on Monday. So it didn't make it. So it had to actually sit the next week. So it didn't go out to the next Thursday to head to Belize. So once he got, got to Belize, which was like that next Sunday, the 28th, Henry picked up the vehicle on Friday. That's and the people, his, that's the person you were donating it to in Belize. Correct. Okay, go on. So, so he, kind of, he, he then asked his common law, was I aware that the windshield was broken? Then I said, of course not. Then he sent me a picture of the damaged windshield. Henry did. From Belize. Okay. So when you see this, do you contact the defendant? No. When I see this, I contact the shipping company from Florida. And, and, right. then, I, and, and then, then I told them that the, the windshield was damaged. And I asked them, you know, how did the damage happen? And because and, um, it wasn't damaged when it was delivered. In my mind, it wasn't damaged when it was delivered to them. All right. What happened, Mr. Mishu? What happened with the windshield? Do you know? If I, if I knew, if I knew, I would tell you, but I do not. I do know. Right. But that did you, I, I know that the picture you sent him, uh, this is the picture you sent him and it's a little blurry. I'm a little suspicious why you send a blurry picture. If I take a picture in order to prove something to somebody and text it to them and I see that, you know, it's blurry, I kind of take a second one. But blurry or not, when I expand that, what am I seeing on the windshield there? I don't know what that is, but I know that it wasn't damaged in my care. I know that for a fact. So what's your theory, that it happened with the Florida shipper or the Belize side or what? Somewhere during that transport from the time that I dropped that vehicle off, that wheelchair got damaged. That doesn't even look like the picture that I sent to him. 
I don't know if it's been photoshopped. I don't know what's what happened to, to that particular well, picture. Well, you're going to you're gonna have is, to prove to me, stop a second. If you're contesting whether this is the picture you sent him, then contest it. Show me a, a different picture. If you can't, then I, I guess you're kind of stuck with it. Right. No, so because I have, I have here, I have, I have the documents where I deliver the vehicle to. They do their own inspection before they will process the vehicle in. And nowhere on that independent inspection is there any proof of any damage to any windshield whatsoever. So mm -hmm. this is a picture, and I see your truck. Is that your carrier behind it? Yes, that, that's my carrier behind it, absolutely. And the picture has the damage on it. I hear what you're saying. They didn't note the damage. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what I'm supposed to do is get to the truth of the matter. And this is kind of, you know, the killer right there, right? Because this is, here's your carrier, and then here's the plaintiff's truck, and there's a smashed windshield. Now, why are you suing for $650, Mr. Sly? Um, that's the cost of transporting your vehicle. The, uh, that's right. not your measure of damages. Yeah, but you don't get free transport well, I, to, you know, to Florida. You get the cost of a I, windshield. I, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> Um, no, yeah, you know, well, you're getting the, something the, right the, now. You're, you're getting something in about 30 seconds, okay? Because <laughs> I think that these pictures show that you're right, that it happened in his care. But right. I'm just saying, you know, maybe it is possible that he didn't even realize it. It is, I mean, it's possible. But either way, it doesn't matter. I find that he's driving it in with the damage. Therefore, it is his responsibility. But the responsibility would be to fix the windshield. And as we know from the text yeah. that you've shown me, it, it only took $300 to fix the windshield. And that's the correct measure of damages. It's not, oh, you've got to pay him back every penny from transport because court is not ching ching, let the cash register ring. Court is to make you whole. So what you're out is the cost to fix the, you know, to the cost of a new windshield plus fixing it, which according to the text are 300. Of course, you're out your court costs and filing the case and chasing him. So you'll be getting that as well. But that's the measure of your damages. So that is my verdict in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $300, which is what those texts show it costs to fix it. Plus, of course, your court costs. Good luck, folks. Thank you. So after carefully examining the photographs, the judge determines that the, the, the damage was caused by the defendant in this case. Mr. Miss you, and what are you thinking right now? Uh, well, obviously, the damage just looked like they're there, and, and that is my carrier in the back, so I'm responsible. So I guess I'll have to, you know, talk that up to years of experience and just making a mistake. Okay, well, that'll do it for, for your participation. You, it cost you $300, Mr. Sly. Uh, I'm interested to know if, uh, if you miss the vehicle now. It's gone. You've had it for a long time. Do you miss it or not? I do, I do miss it because they, they actually did send me pictures of it after they repaired it, and I, I kind of want it back now. You do. <laughs> it's a little far away to get it back. But anyway, you, you, <laughs> thank you very much. Congratulations. All right, Harvey. Thank you. What do you think? Okay, Doug, when you have a situation like this where somebody is doing work and they take possession of your item and all of a sudden it's damaged at the end, I mean, this could be a shipping thing like this or it could even be a car wash even. What you do is take a picture before you turn it over to that person. And that way you can see, for example, in this case, the car, you see the car and you know whether it's damaged or not. And then afterward, if there are pictures of it damaged, you have a compelling case. But the before and after is key. My neighbors are building a deck on their house and the noise is unbearable. They didn't get a permit from the town for the work. Should I report them to the town or file a claim for excessive noise and sue them in small claims? I need my naps. Don't we all need our naps? <laughs> uh, Construction's loud a yeah. lot of times, and whether they're, they're just swinging hammers or, or, or cutting stuff and banging uh, pilings into the ground, etc., it's gonna make a lot of noise. In this instance, you could use the town as kind of a surrogate so you're not the villain, and kind of, they probably have anonymous reporting to the town for somebody not doing permitted work or something, so you could probably keep yourself out of it, and they can be the villain. You can kind of fade the heat 
to the town. But for how long? That's a temporary fix. Right. Because eventually Construction will they'll, resume. They'll, they'll get it and those hammers are going to start swinging again and you got to put a lot of nails in to do a wood deck, which right. is, it sounds that's like. That's the problem is that the phrase is, you, uh, if, you, if you sue them for excessive noise, you have to prove it's excessive. Right. And construction, that's not, you know, it's much easier to prove excessive noise when someone's playing the music too loudly because there's a right. limit on how loudly you can play the music. What's right. the limit on hammering? There's yeah. no limit. Hammering takes you know, it, it it makes the kind of noise it makes. Right. What's the limit on trucks? It makes the kind of noise it makes. So what you've got to figure out is what your town requires. Like we live in a town where you're not allowed to start construction before 8 a.m. Right. And you're not allowed to, to continue to do construction after X hour. I don't right. know what it is. Right. So when people start at 7 a.m., I walk out there and I tell them, well, no, you don't. Right. So, you know, you, you're... You're just going to have to suck it up to some extent and maybe sleep at night rather than during the day. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, you can certainly demand through the town that they follow the rules that your town has set up. Right. But there's going to be noise. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and the worst is when you're on vacation and you get a hotel and there's construction. Oh, like that's right happened to us that so many times. That happened to us like a month ago. We were down in the Keys at a place, at a nice place. Nice place. And there's construction all day long. I couldn't right outside believe the it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't yeah. hear myself think. There was nothing we could do. Yeah, you were playing golf. There was nothing I could do. <laughs> you were playing golf and I was working inside the room and I was. it was maddening. I had to get in right. the car uh, and leave the resort in right. order to keep working. Oh, really? Oh, yes. my God. Can I just tell you, it was very peaceful on the golf course. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah. I bet it was. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs>